Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we are continuing to build our Phoenix Live View application, which is a site that will host my new podcast, Reactor. If you're not familiar with the series, then go to either alchemist.camp slash episodes or go to Alchemist Camp on YouTube, go to the Phoenix Live View playlist. It should be up near the top if you're seeing this uh, anytime in early to mid 2020. Now, for today, we're going to upgrade from Phoenix Live View 0.5.1 to 0.8.1. This is our second upgrade so far. Um, while we're at it, let's also update Phoenix to version 0.1.15. We'll save that. Let's check our git ignore. Um, we're also going to ignore tags because I'm a Vim user and I'm going to ignore star star slash dot ds underscore store because I'm on a Mac. That saved, we should probably blow away our assets directory, or not our assets directory, but the uh, node modules in them. So we'll just rm rf node modules. Live view includes a lot of JavaScript, of course, because it has to. We'll run yarn to generate new node modules with everything in our new depths. In fact, maybe we should have uh, done mix depths dot get before that. I know my VS Code extension will do that. Yeah, so it already did that. I should probably do that before you uh, rebuild your node modules. Now, let's try running it. The app actually will not work, but I'll let you see the, the errors here. Mix phoenix.server. And we'll have a number of, well, number of things I have to compile, but then we'll have some deprecations and some actual errors. The one that we see repeated again and again is uh, that we don't actually have a live link anymore. So let's click through to this error. In our edit template, which is very simple, we've got a live link to back, which goes back to our index page. Live link no longer exists. It's been replaced by two things, well actually four. In your templates, it's replaced by either a live redirect or a live patch. If you're going from one page to another page that's controlled by the same live view, like say navigating from uh, user number 12 to user number 13, or, or more likely blog post 12 to blog post 13 with a next button, then you're going to use live patch. If you're going to something that's controlled by a different live view, like say going from uh, this form here back to the user index page, then you use live redirect. So we'll change that to redirect and save our file. Now, if you're in a live view that's defined in your router, like say user uh, index, in here we would change any sort of links to, uh, instead of live redirect and live patch, it would be push redirect and push patch. Looks like this one doesn't actually uh, involve that logic though. Let's just look at Edit definitely should, because we've got to go from the page we just edited to the next one. So this redirect here would turn into push redirect. Uh, let's do them all, uh, all together though. So we'll go back to our edit HTML EEX, we've got live redirect. Then in our form, no changes there. In index, we have several live links. Uh, index page going to show, edit, or delete, or new. Those are all different kinds of pages. So we're going to change this to redirect. Change that to redirect. This will also be re redirect. So will this. And then we've got a live link down here that's going to be redirect. Save all those changes. In our new form, we have the same thing. In our show, we probably have, yep, the same kinds of navigation links and we'll save those changes. And that should be all of those, so let's try recompiling our app. This is kind of annoying. VS Code keeps popping that up. And you'll see that these mount function 
deprecation warnings are also coming up in our live views. So let's go to the live views and uh, fix both of those issues at once. So go to user edit, the view, not the template. And this redirect is going to have to change as I said a moment ago. And these mounts will also have to change. So as of version 0.8, actually a bit before that, mount was changed from taking two arguments to taking three. It now also takes a parameter. This will be the parameter that comes in from the router. Now, since we're not using it, we'll just add a throwaway uh, params up here, like so. And then let's find our redirect. Uh, two things change here, actually. So instead of a stop atom, we're going to have a no reply atom. It's just a change in the interface. And this redirect is going to be push redirect. So just to reiterate, in your live views, your redirects become either push redirect or push patch if it's going to the exact same kind of view. And then in your templates, it goes to live redirect or live patch. Uh, push redirect there, changed stop to no reply and this stop also has to change to no reply this redirect changes to push redirect moving on to our index we'll do the same thing so uh, we'll add a params to our mount get rid of that warning there are no redirects there in new we have the same thing params Probably could have done a global search and replace on that, but that's okay. Then the stop will change into no reply. Redirect goes to push redirect. And in show, same thing. Okay, let's try running our server again and see if we're getting any errors. Uh, we still have some warnings. Let's see what those are. We have live view flash is not available. Okay, so that's a change in the router. We'll fix in a moment. And an unused alias. Okay, well, not using it. We will get rid of it. All right, in our router, right now we have fetch flash, which is for traditional Phoenix apps. And then we have Phoenix Live View Flash and that plug. Uh, basically, the syntax has changed. They're unified. Uh, so we'll get rid of both of these and we'll include a plug fetch live flash. And this should be available because we're importing Phoenix Live View into our router. Let's make absolute sure of that. Web.ex. We have in our router import Phoenix Live View router. Yeah. Okay, let's try running our server. Okay, no errors, no warnings. That's a nice change. And we have two kinds of things set up. We have our user pages, which apparently are uh, users. There we go. We have our user pages, and we also have the really simple page that I set up that just listens for key presses. Let's fix both of them just so you know, however much of the tutorial you've been following, everything works with current version. So right now, key presses are not working. We'll go to foo. And let's check out foo template. Okay, so this syntax has changed. Instead of phoenix dash key down and phoenix dash target equals window, now it's phoenix dash window dash key down to specify that the entire window is a target and Phoenix target no longer exists. So we can just get rid of this entire thing. Um, just for thoroughness, let's include the Phoenix click in here and we'll just say our Phoenix click is foo underscore click. And actually let's change this event to foo underscore key down and we'll still send a message of whatever uh, was just pressed in our foo live. Our mount function, of course, needs that 
third parameter or the first parameter that's been added to the beginning. And the name of this event is foo key because that's what we just called it. And let's add a little bit of logging here just so we can see what's going on. So we'll say this stuff equals stuff. Obviously, we're going to throw this away after we're, we're done checking it. And io.inspect stuff. And we'll make one more event handler that will check all events. So we've got handle down event for just whatever event. It's not going to be matching a key. It's going to be matching everything as stuff. And we'll still have io inspect stuff, but we'll also have io.puts event and event. So we can see the name of the event that's coming in and understand exactly what's going on. Okay, that was a change. Undefined function key. Key to key. All right, because there is no there is no assign to be happening there. We're just going to return the socket by itself. So we should have two events. We should have one listening for key downs, one listening for clicks. And we'll look in our terminal as we do this. So I'm going to click over here. We are recording the key events. So this is all the inf information that comes with the key. Hit escape. Yeah, that's good. Hit shift G. Yep. Okay. So that looks, that looks fine. Why is it not getting assigned? Hmm, that's strange. I think everything looks fine. So we assign the message of none. We're rendering this template, then when we get a foo key event, which we were getting foo key, oh, foo key down, that's the problem. So change this from foo key down to foo key. So we have foo key and foo click. Okay, there we go. We're updating the key as we press it. And let's make this a little bit smaller so that we can see what's going on more easily click has to be clicked on the element and then we get all the normal click information okay so it looks like we've got the foo stuff fixed let's go on to the users so user index looks okay show looks okay edit looks okay Let's create a new user. Uh, just call this user Sam. Email is going to be sam at example.com. No website. Looks correct to me. We'll make another window. And we'll see if we can update Sam and property changes live. This should be no problem at all. Okay, now it's Bob. We'll delete Bob and boom, we're kicked back to the page. Okay, we've basically got everything working as we had before, but we're going to improve one more thing. Quick shout out to a follower, Maz7, um, who suggested using the, uh, the improved error helpers so that we get data dash phoenix dash error four attributes on each thing in our form so that when we're editing something, we Actually, let's just do a new user. I can show the issue. Uh, we have a number of form helpers here that are listening for bad input. And as soon as we go from one to another, say we have an email, that's no good. Now we get an error about the name also. It can't be blank either. Um, by doing this, by adding this helper that'll put that tag on our error helpers, let's see. Error four, Phoenix error four. Okay, by adding by adding this into our error helpers, we can get more specific feedback. I was gonna put this off until the auth uh, episode, but might as well just fix this up while we're here. We'll go to error helpers. That's in the views. It's generated by default. Uh, we have this error tag four, which is the basic uh, basic one that comes with Phoenix, 
and it's creating content tags that have this, they're still span, they still have the same translate error, they still have the help bot class, but they just add a data attribute that Live View will recognize. So we'll make that change, save our app, and now if I make a mistake on email, nothing comes up about name. Email will have its uh, little alert, but not the name. And same thing with name. If I delete the name, well, it can't be blank, but I'm not getting any sort of warnings about the email or the website until making a mistake. So for any app with Live View form validations, we're going to want to make that change. Now, everything is done in our, our update. Just to help remember the changes we had to make to go from Live View 5.0 to 5.8, let's review them quickly in your router change both the original phoenix fetch flash and the old live view flash syntax to plug fetch live flash this should be available because in your web ex you should be importing phoenix live view dot router into your router ex in your live views change mount 2 to mount 3 do that by adding uh, params as your first parameter to all of those this is the params from your router. Then change the tuples where you're sending a stop atom and a redirected socket to no reply, and then push redirect or push patch if it's the same kind of uh, same kind of thing. Then in your LEEX templates, change live link to live redirect or live patch. Just as in the views, patch is if you're going to the same kind of view. So going from blog post number four to blog post 50, or going from user A to user B. Then use live redirect if you're going to something that's rendered by different live view. These are a bit different depending on what's in your app. This app so far is based heavily off of the official Phoenix live view example that Chris McCord wrote. I don't know how official it is, but it seems official since he wrote it. And that one is still at version 0.5.1, and these are the things that I had to change to get everything to work. If your app uses different uh, events, which it very well may, uh, you may encounter other API changes. Big one I encountered was Phoenix target equals window no longer exists, and we change Phoenix dash key down to Phoenix dash window dash key down. And I've seen this Phoenix dash window dash something a couple of times so you may find that a useful pattern uh, if your app is fairly different you'll have to look at the docs and see what else changed for you moving on to the next episode we'll build out our podcast pages see you next time